Okay, picking up where I was in the last video, I had just finished getting this uh, FT2232H uh, connectivity. So I go USB in through it and basically program my device. And I will say that that has been an awesome change uh, coming from this guy here, this platform cable USB 2, not only for the uh, convenience factor, so I don't have to plug in pins up here, uh, but it is it seems much faster so uh, maybe that uh, was to be expected by those of you that have done that but uh, I, i'm pleasantly surprised the the programming process uh, runs through much faster with this uh, onboard configuration than it did with this other other device now what i left off with is then needing to get my uart work and the serial communication so i can come in through the usb and uh, either send in data or receive back data uh, and I do have that working now. So I did make a couple of changes, and it's probably going to be hard to see on the board here, so I'll just look at the version on my screen. Uh, when I had designed this, I did put in on that specific circuit for the UART some zero-ohm resistors, basically, just so that I could take those off and, and maybe go to different lines or do something uh, different than what I had designed here. Uh, which ends up being a very good thing because uh, it ends up that I didn't want to use the ports that I originally had set up to use. So originally, I had planned on using these two ports here, MIO 15 and 14. And uh, for the, ends up that those pins really have to be for UART 0, not UART 1. Uh, and the way I found that out is I was over here in the zinc configuration... And when I went to, oh, I'll just go to the I.O. pin. And I have my resolution turned down so things are a little bit larger here so you can see it better. But when I go down to my UART and I end up looking at these pins available, uh, the 1415, that's not an option that I see here for UART 1. And uh, I had it set up to use pins 1415. So I changed that to use pins 12 and 13. Uh, to be on UART 1. Well, it happens to be that I had those pins available. So originally I was supposed to be here. I had these just pins open, and I had just simply placed a, a handful of open unused pins up on a small header right up here. So what you're going to see on the board, um, maybe not so well in this light, but as I take future pictures of it, I've got a couple of bodge wires that are essentially going from this header down to where these zero ohm resistors were because I took those out. So the result of that is that I am using the two ports here for 12 and 13 uh, to connect up to uh, these two right here. Um, so that is working and I, I'll show you that here uh, in just a little bit. Uh, the other thing I had to do is go in and really reconfigure some stuff inside of Vivado and getting back into here when I go into the processing system. If you remember at one point I had just put in 30 megahertz for the input clock because that was the lowest number I could put in here. But I did come in here and I corrected that. So this now reads 33.333. I did come down to my processor clock. I maxed that out at 667, and I maxed out my DDR clock at 534. Uh, so all of those changes I rebuilt uh, and basically generated the bitstream, and then I went over to Vitus and created a new project based on the DDR test. So basically you just make a new project, you base it on the platform that you export from Vivado and you choose one of their sample uh, applications which is a DDR test and that's what I did and then I have uh, run that and so that is now programmed onto the board and that's what the board is running right now you'll notice that my done light is lit up I've just already done that there's there's nothing to do in here it was just simply open it up it already has the source code there's nothing to change it assumes you're running a 33.33333 megahertz clock, which I am. Uh, so that all worked out well. Basically ran it and uh, it is on the board. 
with that, then I have TerraTerm, and TerraTerm is currently connected to this. And if I, let's see, press Enter, uh, this is coming from the board. And so this is just showing that, well, first of all, my serial connection is running. I'm only running at, at 115, 200. So 115K uh, is what I'm running this at as far as the speed. Uh, but the menu comes up, and if I want to come in here and do an S, for example, it does a quick test. And looking at that, uh, let's see, the S is test 1 meg starting at you know this address. And I'm not real familiar with this testing, but uh, just really quick trying to interpret it. You know, I'm expecting to see all zeros in here because this is talking about error counts. So error counts, error counts, uh, and I see no error counts in that one meg of testing, which is great. So I'll go ahead and run the full test here momentarily, and uh, that might take a while, but I can show the results of that. There's also these eye tests and uh, this is something I have to learn more about, but I'll run the eye test so you can kind of see what's here. And I believe the, the larger the number, the better if it can do it without errors. And I can see when I get up to the largest numbers, I'm getting errors. Uh, but ultimately at the end of this, I believe you want the center numbers to be in the center. So 128, ideally I'd have 64. I'm at 52, uh, 56, 58, 60 for these four. Uh, lanes. Um, so some of you probably know this really well, uh, but that's where mine is coming up as far as that read test. Now I'll run the right eye test also, and that would be an eye. So I'll run that and see what it shows me for results. And then again, I got back uh, 62, 60, 60, 58. And uh, you want the, you know, the wider the width, I believe, is what you want. So, you know, that's that's where I ended up. And, and again, for those that do this all the time, uh, you can tell me if that's that's okay. I think that's okay, the numbers that I'm seeing there. Um, maybe this one here is the worst one. Let's see, go back down here. Yeah. Um, but for my very first attempt at routing DDR, and running it at the max speed that I can in that zinc, which is probably you know far from what it could be running. Um, so maybe that's not super impressive, but for me, I'm quite happy that uh, this appears to be working. Uh, so I think I'm gonna let it run the full test here and see how that might turn out, how many errors I have as I do that full test. So I've got a, a gig of memory, so let's just go ahead and hit six and I'm sure this is going to take quite a while, um, but maybe in the meantime, uh, you can see it. It probably isn't going to show up on the camera very well, but you know I do have the little LED showing me uh, when I'm uh, either sending or receiving. Maybe you've seen that previously as I've been doing stuff here. Uh, so anytime I'm receiving back data, especially you know right now it's just sending this little character at a time, so it's barely blipping. But when I get a full screen full of data, you can you'll notice that this uh, LED for the receive will light up. Uh, or actually in that case the transmit and then when I'm typing on the keyboard uh, I'll be receiving in uh, if I have that uh, if I have those LEDs hooked up correctly uh, but what I think I'm finding so far is that uh, things are coming together on this so it seems like I can use the USB for power I can program with it now I can do the UART work with it. I'm leveraging that UART to actually, you know, do this uh, memory test so that I can tell it what tests to run and get the results uh, back out through that uh, TerraTerm program. Uh, luckily, I had these unused pins available here for uh, those unused ports on the processing system, and I had put in those zero ohm resistors down here, so that all worked out uh, quite well. i actually kind of lucky that, that that did work out as well as it did. I think I now have to determine what is my next step. So what's left on here that I haven't done yet? There's whole, there's a lot, and, and the things coming up are probably quite complicated for me. Uh, there is going to be HDMI, HDMI output. 
Uh, if I get that working at some point, I can put an add on card here. I have the signals uh, for the HDMI input, so I could take a run at that. I have an SD card to work with yet. I also have a, a USB Phi that I can put in here. I like if I want to be a USB host type of thing. Uh, and then I also have an Ethernet uh, set up here that uh, I can see if I could eventually get that working. But that's where I'm going to pause on my talking. I'm just going to let this test run. I'll record it and I'll, I can play it back um, either in a, a faster mode or just jump to the end and show you the results. And I'm not sure how long this is actually going to take to run this test. So I am going to pause and come back. Okay, so it looks like that finished and looking at this tally, I don't think I'm seeing any errors. So if I'm understanding all this right, option six was test the full gig, starting at this address. And I think that looks pretty good. So for those of you that have done lots of this, uh, if I'm mistaken there or I'm misreading that, please let me know or if there's anything there that uh, is of concern. And again, if I go back and do the read eye test and then I'll do the right. So I've got all those numbers here that I can save when I'm done with the video so I can go back and look at those. Uh, so I think I've done all of those tests and scrolling back up. That was the read. And this was the right. Uh, it does show temperature here and, you know, as far as this is all concerned, uh, barely, you know, you can barely even feel that it's getting warm on the, the zinc and then the, the, the memory really isn't, uh, even warming up yet. So I don't know, obviously, um, some situations, maybe that does get warm there, but I don't see anything uh, here that at least feeling on the board feels like a concern. Uh, okay, I'm going to end it there. So uh, definitely if, uh, if you interpret a lot of these and you see something that is standing out as not, not ideal or worrisome here, let me know if you think these results are adequate or any other thoughts, let me know. Again, you know, for my first time routing and to have made it through A, it working, and B, if I'm interpreting this right and there's no errors, uh, that is phenomenal. So that is a win. Very nice. Now I've got to figure out uh, what I want to do next. So uh, again, I don't know which piece I'm going to jump into next, uh, but um, I'm just happy to have gotten this far. This is, this is awesome. So thanks everybody.